This is cliffcentral.com. On a Thursday morning around this time, you get to uh, join us when we talk through some of the big issues, the current affairs that are interesting uh, to everybody and the things that people are talking about. And this morning, we're not going to waste your time. We're going straight to the city of Cape Town and what's going to be happening there in the upcoming elections. And there is an important job up for grabs. It's not the kind of job most people would want because it's work. It's hard work. But we have two gentlemen who are going to battle it out to run Cape Town as the mayor of Cape Town. And we're pleased to have them both here. We'll get to them in a second. Pumi Mashiho is, of course, here. This is brought to you by Nando's and is the one place we don't have to worry about how hot and heavy it gets because, you know, with Nando's, it's always spicy. Even the, the, the lemon and herb version is bound to keep you in exactly the place you want to be. So, lots to talk about this morning. Let me start off with uh, Brett Heron, who is from the Good Party. He is a lawyer by profession, served in the Executive City Office of Cape Town for almost a decade. He led the implementation of Africa's most successful bus rapid transit system, the My City Bus, and has been responsible for transport, urban development, spatial planning, and housing. He, of course, resigned from the DA in 2018 after the caucus blocked affordable housing projects that he had initiated and championed. So he is uh, no longer a big fan of the DA at all, but he was elected a member of the Provincial Parliament of the Western Cape and serves as a member of the Human Settlements, uh, Transport and Public Works uh, Departments and Environment and uh, Development Planning as well on the Standing Committees. He's a passionate champion of integrated affordable housing, efficient and sustainable urban forms and urban connectivity. That's a, a long list of, of a really hard jobs, Brett, and now you want to go for an even harder job. Are you a sucker for punishment? Some may say so. Gareth, good morning, Gareth and Pumi. I mean, some may say so, but um, I think, as you said right at the beginning, or maybe you didn't say it outright, but it's the way I interpreted it. It is, it is a hard job. It's a tough job. Many people wouldn't want it, but it's, um, it's, a, it was, it's a huge privilege. And with privilege comes a huge amount of responsibility. And, right. um, you know, you can't, you can't live in a city like Cape Town, which has got so many amazing things going for it, but also so many communities suffering with neglect. Um, and with, if you love the city as much as I do, you, you, you don't sit back, you step up and you say, I would like to get involved. Well, thank you for making some time for us this morning. I'd also like to welcome Neil De Beer. Hey, Neil, how are you? Hey, Neil. Hey, good morning, how Gareth you? from a, can you, I'm very well. Good morning. Good. Neil, you are the leader of the United Independent Movement. And you announced that you also want to be mayor of Cape Town. And uh, tell us a little bit about you, because um, you said it all came to a point last year when you realized the wisdom of uh, the late President Nelson Mandela is that he died twice, physically, of course, and then also dying in the ANC. And uh, and for you, uh, politics is, is not something that you're unfamiliar with, but give us a little bit about your background so we know something about you. Oh, good morning, and uh, <clears throat> good morning to Brett. Good to see him. Uh, I'm seeing him, me and him look a bit tired, but we're okay. Coming to you <laughs> from a bright morning in Umtata, my home oh, right. ground. So I'm in the, yeah, Molweni, Molweni So um, on a blitz tour across the country, Gareth, eight cities in 12 days, um, and spent an unbelievable evening last night with the Koza Kingdom, where I grew up in exile. So I'm a person that joined Umkonte Wesizwe uh, in 1988. Yeah. So I'm more a soldier of art. Uh, I'm a battle commander, so there's a lot of things I understand. 32 years in the ANC, uh, served in the intelligence services, um, and uh, ran a couple of projects in Africa, uh, was seconded to the um, African Union, so ran about 53 countries economy at one stage for two years in Addis Ababa. And wow. I'm a businessman. I currently run a world um, fund, which is an international fund that invests approximately 5 billion US dollars per year in 32 countries in Africa. We are based in Spain, Barcelona. I'm mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. But uh, more than that, I'm just a fighter and a person that's been in 32 years of politics but uh, decided one morning that there's just a lot of crap in this country and that it's yeah. time to bang these people back into order so i'm All an right. ordinary man and that's so it. neil 
Neil, what, what makes you want to run for mayor of Cape Town? It sounds like you've got a full plate of stuff to do already. You've got a lot of exper experience under the belt. Well, why would you want to run for mayor of Cape Town? What's that all about? Well, because Cape Town is absolutely in a total turmoil. It's living in a rubbish bubble, and the people are tired of being lied to. So it's very simple. This city doesn't work for you. So I don't know where we sit in a Cape Town, which is my grape home, which is Brett's home ground. And you drive around where we drive around, by the way. And that is you go into Elsie's, you go into Mitchell's Plain, side, there where I grew up, and you see absolute dismay. And then you go sit in Bishop's Court and you go, am I in the same city? So no. I decided I'm going to climb in there because, number one, the biggest problem we've got is poverty and crime. So I'm going to take on headed at the gangsterism, which I have been, by the way. I have my own specialized unit, 32 guys and girls, been going out in the streets for two years with our bulletproofs and guns, and we're clearing the city. So, so I got involved because you've got a lead. You can't talk yeah, about it. That's, that's interesting because that's one of the things that I don't think many of the parties have actually tried to get involved in. It's too dangerous. It's too much work. And the costs outweigh the benefits but it's it's it i mean that's from a politician's point of view i think uh, i'd like to get into some more of the details of what it is that you both want to do i mean i know fighting crime is a big part of your story neil and and yours uh, brett we'll get into in a moment because what you've done already you've got a bit of a track record there in terms of of running projects like my city bus so we can talk a little bit about that too but i'm sure that that pumi who's very rational about these things we had two mayoral candidates for Johannesburg talking to each other the other day, and um, they were very polite with each other. I hope that you two aren't going to be polite if you disagree. Pums, where, where do you think Cape Town's biggest issues are, and what do you think these two mayoral candidates in Cape Town need to know? Look, I think Neil sums it up quite wonderfully, because Cape Town has this dichotomy. There are two Cape Towns, and one that works splendidly for one group of people, and another part of Cape Town that really doesn't care about a huge chunk of, of the residents of Cape Town. But so, look, I, I think the thing I'm most interested in for both of you, you know, you come from other parties, you come from bigger parties. Why do you think going it alone is the way to go? I mean, good is a smaller party. Uh, and Neil, you're starting a party. Is it not better to kind of fix it from the inside? Do you think you can get there from the outside? Brett, you start, you start off. Tell us about what you think good has that, that your former home, the DA, doesn't have. And, and listen, guys, I, I, I echo Pumi's sentiments about the fact that going it alone shows that some kind of citizen action is what's required here. And I like the fact that you're both not afraid to go it alone. But why do you think that's going to work? Answer Pumi's question, Brett. You go first. Yeah, it's a very good question, and um, I don't see it as going it alone. I see it as walking the correct path. So stepping out of what was definitely not the correct path, or a party that was on the wrong path, um, and being true to both what what we promised to the voters and being true to ourselves. Um, so Neil's correct. I mean, and Pumi's correct. We have. Um, a city where which has all the ingredients to be the most amazing city in the world um, where we can address um, the our history and our past and the neglect um, in ne neglectful circumstances in which many people live in um, but we need a government that has the will to do so and um, you know you ask why why don't you try from the inside you have to be inside a party that fundamentally but fundamentally believes that um, it has a responsibility, a duty, and would like to address those conditions on the Cape Flats where parks are broken, so broken that actually play equipment kills children, where sewage is flowing into people's homes, where council um, rental accommodation is falling apart. That part is just neglected, and there's no will in the DA to deal with that. And so, you, you, you know, I mean, we did try from the inside. I bumped heads for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. And the final, the final straw was, you know, promising in a 2016 manifesto that we would deliver affordable housing in well-located areas. Um, I went out and um, did that, um, launched 11 sites within the city centre in Woodstock and Salt River, which surrounds our city centre. And the, the DA caucus said no. I was told at my last caucus meeting that I attended 
that spatial transformation is a swear word. Now, spatial transformation includes fixing all of those problems on the Cape Flats. And if that is a swear word in the DA, then what? Are, I was in the wrong party. Brett, you're breaking my heart. What are these things you're telling us of your former party? <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you why the 25th of October 2018 was the last caucus I attended when I tried to persuade the caucus to support an affordable housing project in on the Salt River market site, which is in Salt River. Um, and the caucus came up with all kinds of excuses as to why it shouldn't happen. And then I was told by the deputy caucus leader that spatial transformation is a swear word. The very interesting thing is that I'd never used the words trans spatial transformation in the presentation. I was motivating for affordable housing in the inner city. Hmm. Neil, do you want to have a go at Pumi's question? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yes. I think we are hot for Pumi. We are tired of people that come from politics. So the politicians there, the people here, Nomsland. So plain and simply, all these politicians are rehashing themselves. They are all ex-politicians. And now they're wearing different color t-shirts. But it's the same people who's been sitting for 27 years, who's been shlalapanzing on their backside, Promising five years at the time, five times now to do something. And at the end of the day, in Isikosa, they end up with Dololo. Dololo. So plain and simply, you cannot sit in a city that has got all the people, young mom, upper east, that's all waterfront, and then sit here with Yiri Potkakne, where the people are saying, no, but I am going to fight crime. I'm going to fight. And then they sit in a council meeting eating Kentucky. And then they want to come back to us and they want to say, but we will fix Kailicha, Kayamandi, Langa. What a disgrace that you are currently sitting in a camp called COVID in Kailicha where they don't have water. No water. They've got to walk four yeah, kilometers. I, I want to, I just want to jump in here and say to both, both of you, because I hear you, I hear you complaining about stuff that, that is going on. And that's, that's fair enough. You know a little bit about this, Brett, but Neil, coming from the outside, you know, I'm not a politician either, and I can sit here and moan about them. It's part of my job. But Cape Town, as awful as it may be to some of us, and as outrageous as the inequality might be to some of us, is run better, ironically, than any other city in the country. Uh, they have, they have, no, no, no. You can, you, we could say, listen, I'm not standing up for the current regime there at all, but it is a better run city. On, on the books, it's better run. It's been given clean audits internationally. It has been it has been praised for being one of the few municipalities in this country that's actually got some money in the bank and where people are paying their taxes and where things mostly work. Listen, nothing in this country works 100%. And there isn't another city that can claim to be better run than Cape Town in South Africa. Or am I wrong? So it's easy You're for wrong. us to sit here and criticize it. Okay, tell me which, which, city, which cities run better. I don't think, uh, Gareth, it's about clean It's can tell us because he's from the yeah. inside. No, yeah, I look, I mean... You, you were there for this, 10 years. I was there for 10 years. And yes, when I was there, we got four clean audits on the road. It was the first time that it, Cape Town had ever achieved that. But you can't measure whether something is well run by sticking to the rules. I mean, the fact that you, you get clean audits or unqualified audits is a good measurement um, that you are sticking to the rules. But it's not mm -hmm. a measurement that you're actually delivering services. So, yes, I, I mean, it, Patricia DeLille, when she was the mayor, used to say when she got that clean audit, the Auditor General used to say to her, every time you don't praise a, sw a fish for swimming. So yeah. to, to say that, we, that Cape Town is the best run city because it is clean on the books, uh, first of all, assumes that the books are accurate. And I can show you many, many um pieces of paper that, I, that I've received since I've left, which shows that, yes, the Auditor General is giving clean and unqualified audits, yet there's stuff going on that is that is corrupt. But secondly, yeah. that's not the measurement, Gareth. Again, yeah. The measurement is how okay. people's lives change. Okay, but again, compared to what? I mean, you, you, which municipality in the country is better run? I'll ask the question again, because there is huge net immigration into Cape Town for a very specific reason, because rich and poor people alike understand that that is a place where mostly, again, not 100%, we're not talking about utopia, that doesn't exist, 
mostly things are better run than in other parts of South Africa. That's why people move into Cape Town and move out of other places. So I think, I mean, look, you, if you want to compare to other South African cities, then then on the books in terms of clean audits, yes, great, Cape Town is getting clean audits. But clean audits don't measure um, everything, as I say. And so I wouldn't want to lead a city that compares itself to Joburg and says, OK, we're better than Joburg or we're better than Pretoria or Chwane or Nelson Mandela Bay. Let us be but a city that actually addresses the needs of the people who are living with sewage running through their homes with yeah, uh, no yeah. public transport. I mean, okay. go and tell those people okay. that this is a well-run city. That's I, So I understand where you're coming from and, and the heart is in the right place for both of you. And, and there's no denying that all South Africans feel in some way that we wish we, we could be better, we wish we could be delivering better, we wish we could be delivering for everybody. But I, I also then wonder what, what that means in real time, what does it mean? You, I mean, um, for you, Brett, you left the DA because you're saying the caucus became your problem. So how are you going to make sure with proportional representation and, and everything else that's going on that you are able to push your policies when, if you get the votes, if you get enough vote, will you be able to work with the people around you who obviously don't have the political will to push those policies? Can you do that? Well, I mean, you can do it if they share share the vision, um, and if they don't share the vision, if you have a majority um, in a council, then you then you don't you know then they they they're, they're the opposition. So the people that are surrounding me and good all share this vision. We we campaign under four very simple uh, messages: spatial justice is what started good, um, social justice, economic justice, and environmental justice. And you'll find all of our candidates are fully committed to that. And if we are a majority or form part of a majority, those will be the, the, the things that we will be, those justice pillars will be what we um, we govern under. So, you know, we, we I left a party where my colleagues didn't share that the, the visions or didn't even share the commitments that, that we made in the 2016 election campaign um, that was articulated in a manifesto. So... Yes, I think we can achieve it if we have the vote and if we are a majority or part of a majority um, where those uh, visions are are the red lines that, that we all agree on. Do you think you can get the vote? I think so. You know, I think um, you, you, I mean, Neil used the word and it's a beautiful word and it's completely appropriate. People are hutful. I mean, the DA have run Cape Town for 15 years now, and I would love to take you just for an, half a day th through communities with, as I said, park equipment that's broken. Where I mean, a child actually two months ago went to play in a park, it was so badly managed, the moving parts fell off the hinges, and he, he was crushed to death. Um, sewage, sewage flowing through homes, okay, um, road, right. roads with more potholes let's, than roads. So it's not, easy. Let's, yeah, you, let's, let's not go can back I ask down one more question. on the road. Yes. <laughs> can I ask? Can I ask a question, Neil? Having been um, in the ANC for so many years before, and now sitting here saying, "I'm I'm starting something new with new values, new systems," but you know that people vote for the ANC, people vote for the DA. What is it that you think will make people stop voting the way they've voted all this time and vote for you? I'm, <clears throat> I'm the Gareth Cliff story. <laughs> you know, Are you ready? I've, I've been, I've been, I, I know Gareth for quite some long time. Gareth did it. Gareth got hot full of a system. Gareth got blocked everywhere because no one wanted to hear the truth. So welcome, Gareth Cliff. <laughs> so, you know, I'm but Gareth. I, for me, I'm, makes I'm, a good... I, I, got, I got tired of the system. That, that, okay, I but that's about... I got tired of lies. Neil, I've that's got about you. Of people paying lip service. That's about you. I want to know why. For me, asks why do you think people will vote for yeah. you? They're because voting. They are. They're voting for me. Of course, they are. I would not have got this far by having more than 1.3 million people log on daily now to see Neil De Beer speak on an average Facebook. I get linked on 390,000 people. We are 26 days old, Brett, and we've got 9,500 members registering, 1,000 a week. I'm 26 days old. I'm putting 329 councillors 
on the 1st of November into eight metros, I am standing very simply and saying, that man you see in there in orange is not my enemy. I know him very well. I'm an ex-spy. I actually well, know. So well, here's the point. Well, well, let me finish, Garrett. This man's boss, Patricia Dalil, I know her very well. She went from PAC to DA. Ne? Patricia was the one that screamed daily. Where's the money of the firearms? Now she's a minister. The people that I carry dockets about sits across her every day in a Lakota. So what we've got here, no, no, no attacking. I'm saying Herman Mashaba, Patricia Delo, uh, uh, Mushi Mayamani, these are people, Helen Zilla, these are people that we grew up with. But the question is, at the end of the day, what are we going to do to change the person on the ground's life? Now, so if Brett you knows, all agree, if you all yes. agree, Neil, why not form a coalition? Why not form one party with all of your support bases to be able to be strong enough to take out the competition? Well, it's very simple. I made a declaration three weeks ago, and I stick with it. Number one, I have approached various parties, and I've asked them, we all want to fight crime. We all want to fight poverty. We all want corruption to end. This is the mantra now. But here's a question. When you go into power, and here's the, here's the story, Karen. I'm sorry. But in no, politics no. today, I am telling you, and I think Brett will agree, we cannot fight this battle alone. I agree. Coalition governments are the next step. The only way we are going to survive fighting this draconian beast of the ANC. By the way, it's not the ANC anymore. It's not my ANC. When Mandela died, it ended. So okay. plain and simply, I want to ask Brett, I want to ask the Cape Colored uh, 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 Party, the Cape Independence Party, because I'm talking about my city. The only way we're going to end up is coalition. But I vehemently have a couple of disagreements with the good party. It's okay. my right. Yep. I am not going to sit with them because there's just a couple of differences. But the, the, the essence, I don't agree, I don't disagree with them. But I have decided I will never negotiate with the EFN. I will never negotiate with the ANC for power. Never. They want to. They will. It, 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 I don't know what Brett's opinion can I, is. Can I just ask but you quickly? I am please? not going to negotiate with them. They are the enemy. I, I, I'm, first of all, I'm really impressed with what you're doing on social media. And even Sean here says you're doing really well on social media. You're the only politician that has even tried to exploit TikTok. So well done on that front. But can I just ask you, for the purposes of, of all of us who don't know enough about you this morning, how is it that you fell out with the ANC? I mean, you say that they died when Madiba died and all that stuff. But like, what was your basic disagreement with them? Where did you fall off the ANC train? 17 December 2017, NASREC conference, we're about to elect a president. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and, and I'm going, there's a discussion. You, you, what happens at an at a ANC conference is you, you do the politics and then you do the policies. The policies mm -hmm. become the fundamental policy of that party. And when that party wins government, it becomes the policy of government, Gareth. And I'm sitting there in that conference at Nasrek, and they're about to now agree on policies so that they can now win the election and become government and enforce. And they brought up two policies in that conference. And then at that stage, as a businessman, but as a member of the ANC's uh, provincial uh, uh, membership representation, because ordinary members can also be there, Mm -hmm. I looked at them and I said to them, are you, are you, are you losing it? What were the policies? You're, a, you're about to now put two policies in our document. One, land without compensation. Yeah. And the nationalization of the Reserve Bank. No, I, okay. said, I said, yeah, get yourself an ice cream. Are you crazy? <laughs> this is economic suicide. My guy is small, man. And I said, if you do this, an African is murtu, yau dolola and as true as hell, Garrett, they go and adopt the policies. Now, what, what did it bring us at the end of the day? 
It's not a land debate. It is an economic debate. And there, Brett will agree. Cape Town needs Isi Benza. It needs jobs, Gary. Now, this, well, can I tell you? A... Can I tell you? Can I tell you why they emigrate? Can I tell you why half of Transkai is currently in Ikapa? Can I tell you why? They are there because there is a euphoria attitude that there's jobs in Cape Town. I'm sitting in Umtata right now in the Transkai. There's no jobs here. Yeah. So what's my attitude, Brett? I'll tell you. I'm going to give you a tip. Cape Town, in my attitude under mayoral ship, will in actual fact invest. I'm going to put part of our budget into doing what we will call intercity trade. Wow. So Cape Town is actually going to start doing intercity trade with East London, Port Elizabeth, and cities like Umtata, where we are going to stipulate our reverse economies so that the people in Umtata do not have to emigrate to Cape Town and then sit there. Yes, and have no me, this emigration term, hold up. I, yes. I really have to call us all out on this you. particular one. This this idea of immigration is such an apartheid term because it's mm -hmm. a term that says that there are Bantu stands and you belong here. South Africa belongs to all of us. So yeah. your opportunity to move from one place to another has nothing to do with immigration. But the fact that as a South African, you have a right to be in any city in South Africa or any rural place in South Africa without being made to feel bad about the fact that you have moved from one place to the other. This immigration term, yeah. guys, you're I, no, skating I, I, on very thin ice here. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm actually sitting here. I had a meeting with most of the businessmen in Umtata. So take immigration, call it migration. Economic yep. migration between two cities. That's a better word. Okay. So, yeah. so, so, so what I'm saying is... Sorry, guys. I want to give you we, each. And, I want to give you one easy run here quickly because uh, I don't want us to to start polemics and and uh, I mean uh, uh, rhetoric. I don't want us to to all start you know giving our political positions without any need for us to call it to order. Just let me give you an easy one here for both of you. What's wrong with Alan Windy, and what do we think of him? It's Brett's friend. That's not the thing. <laughs> <laughs> If it's and not, if it's not, not, you can ask Alan Windy. He would also say that, he, that we're not friends. <laughs> All right. So, so tell us why. <laughs> no, no, sure. So tell us why you think he's not your friend and, and what you think he's doing badly uh, and, and how we could improve things for the people of Cape Town just based on what he's not doing right. Let's give you the easy low blow first. So let me say that, I mean, I've known Alan Windy for quite a while and now I'm in an opposition party in the legislature. And Alan Windy likes to govern by announcements. He likes the, the PR and the spin. But if you scratch below all of those announcements, there is no substance to them. There's no feasibility studies. There's no um, strategy. Um, they are, uh, there's a lot of announcements that have, that have no substance. Um, he announced this grand scheme called the Western Cape Safety Plan. Um, with a PowerPoint presentation. And when I asked for the plan, which he was allocating 1.3 billion Rand to, it took yeah. about four, four weeks to get a draft document. That's all that exists. 1.3 billion is allocated to a safety plan that his government doesn't even understand. I mean, I'm telling them what's in that safety plan because I've read what the city of Cape Town, who's the implementer of that safety plan, has adopted. And when he pro promised police officers to communities that are ravaged by crime, what he's giving them is learner law enforcement officers armed with pepper spray in the 10 most deadly areas in the city of Cape Town. So that's just a false hope and a false promise and creates a mm -hmm. false sense of security. He announced that he was going to procure vaccines for the Western Cape, an opportunistic announcement at the height of our pandemic when people were panicking. When you ask questions about what he's done and you get the list, they've written to a few consulates and they've made two phone calls, one to Pfizer and one to J&J. &J. They're already providing the vaccine to South Africa. I can go on. It's just unbelievable that, I mean, the media loves him. The media loves him. I don't know why, but if you, you, know, if you scratch below the surface, the announcements that are made are not supported by any uh, real strategy um, or any real intervention. There's going to be no outcome for 1.3 billion rand spent in 10 crime hotspots in, in Cape Town with learner law enforcement officers with six weeks training put into these gang-ridden areas with the idea that they can halve the murder rate. 
it's just bullshit. All right. How about, I'm going to let you just answer one other question. Um, and then I'll hand over to Neil because I'm sure he's got some things to say about Alan Wendy too. But Mo Rabbit says here, blah, blah, your leader, this is your leader, Brett, sold out for a minister's post. What do you say to that? Because Patricia has, you know, she lost some some of the the the, the pretty good reputation she had when she decided she was going to go and work inside uh, Cyril's cabinet because people are looking at that cabinet. First of all, she doesn't have a starring role. I mean, if anything... I think Patricia's public persona has probably suffered because she can't say so many things now that she's a minister, which she used to be able to say as someone outside the tent, you know, pissing in, um, to, to put it in a crude, uh, ugly uh, metaphor. What do, you, what do you say when people say your party is just a home for Patricia DeLille and a couple of other disgruntled people? Um, how can you trust someone who would go and work with the ANC as a minister? Well, let me say, I mean, Patricia, there's, there's no deal between the ANC and good. And Patricia was asked to serve. And you're right, it's not a it's not a glamorous role that she's got. She's got one of the toughest portfolios, public works and infrastructure. The, it's the department that was riddled with corruption and still is. It's the department that built in Kandla for 280 mm -hmm. million rand. You know, it's the department that rented um, Rusha Bangu's um, office space for for police headquarters. So she's been she was asked to serve her country, not to serve the ANC. And you know what rational South African who loves this country, who thinks they can make a contribution, who gets a mm -hmm. call from the president and says, "Won't you please take on this task?" What rational patriotic South African will say, "No, I'm not going to help this country." I mean, she's not. There's no agreement that we can't criticize the ANC. We contested fiercely against them in a by-election in Otsar in, in November last year, or December last year, and we lost to them by 50 votes. They beat us by 50 votes. So we contest them in elections. We are an opposition party, but the president asked Patricia DeLille to serve her country. I'm, I'm happy with that answer. Um, Neil, your turn. Alan Windy, and then uh, maybe you've got something to say about, uh, you know, what your party's going to do right in that area. Go for it. I, I've just decided I'm going to be so nice to Pumi from now on. <laughs> yeah, you better. You don't have to be nice to me. Don't have you to don't be know nice. what you're dealing with. No, I'm with just you. like that. I just, I just love your style. <laughs> so let me, let, let, let me, let me quickly tell you, Gareth uh, Pumi. Yeah. Uh, um, Bread. I think we need to go back to basics. I, I think we've become a country with cliches. I think we've become a country that dances more about celebrations. We've become a country of events, Brett. A child dies, we have a funeral, we tell the people we're going to do something about it, and then the next day it just goes on. I, 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 I'm actually a normal citizen. I'm no one else. I just have a hell of a platform. And what I did was I said to myself, I come from Kailicha. I know Mitchell's Plain, and I also know Bishop. I know it. Cape Town, Brett, is our city. But here's my question. When councillors steal money, it's not corruption, it's stealing, it's theft. They don't go to jail. So what we are trying to do is say to ourselves the 5C concept. That's it. Alan Windy is the premier. I sent him a note the other day. I said to him, I like Nescafe, one sugar and a bit of milk. Because you as, as premier are going to have a lot of coffee with me as mayor. Al commander. And then me and you are going to sit and we are going to have to get on, even if we just fake it. Mm. But what we cannot do is not look at the harsh reality. Now, remember, I'm the president of the UIM. I've got eight metros, but Ikapa, Ikaya. Brett will agree. At the end of the day, we've got a beautiful city. But what is wrong? So let's fix what's wrong. And one of it is the poverty that Alan and them, I am sorry, they're living in a bubble. Now, I get chastised when I call the new mayoral candidate of Cape Town of the DA a child. Whoa, Who's that? that who is their I don't know who their, who their candidate is, who the child is. Tell me Red, who that is. Red. <laughs> <laughs> who is it? Who's their candidate? Who's I don't know. Red. His name is Jordan Hill Lewis. He, that's Double barrel name. But Jordan here's the Hill point. Lewis. Okay. I, I got slammed by saying, how can you say the DA's mayoral candidate is a child? I said, I didn't mean he's a child. What I meant was, Gareth Pumi, he's 38 years old. 
he was 16 years old, 34. He was not even 16 years old before apartheid. I wasn't attacking that child. I was blaming the DA for putting up a lamb to slaughter. Allah had He's four the DA's shadow minister for five yeah, years. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so, so he can count. So he can count. Have you told him what is he going to do when he has to sit in front of the mongrels gang leader? What is he going to count bullets or what? So at the end of the day, we need a fighting leader. We don't need someone that can sit back and speak to a person. Pumi, listen, mamela mam. <laughs> we have such a diverse city. We have a twin city attitude. So I have now invoked, listen to these, because in politics, apparently, you've got to have acronyms. So because, you know, if you say DPI, ESG, DT, CEE, they go, wow. So here it is. The UIM is starting something called the DPI, Direct Poverty Intervention. Direct. You know, that's, uh, I, I'm sorry Direct. to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that you, you're already falling into the the, the, the hole and the rut that politicians fall into. I'm reminded, Margaret Thatcher used to say that, you know, politicians um, w use infrastructure where the rest of us use roads. <laughs> and and that's one of the sure. things. Sure. That's one of the things that 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 we struggle with in South Africa. So I, I'm, you know, I also want to talk with you guys about the playing field. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, when it when when the the list nominations closed, what looked like the city of Cape Town being up for grabs, particularly for the DA because they had fielded everybody and the ANC was nowhere to be seen. And mm -hmm. then on Tuesday, was it Tuesday or Monday, we hear from the CEO of the IEC that they're now extending the deadline. Mm -hmm. So it means that the ANC has the opportunity to, to field people. So they will, they probably will come in there and will come in with a strong showing. Can I, can I just uh, ask this you, question? You got, okay. Sorry, Pums, just based on what you're saying here, isn't it atrocious that the party that has the most um, people voting for it in South Africa for the last 25 years cannot get their shit together and actually get their candidates in on time or pay the fees that have to be paid. Can we just stop for a minute and take, just take stock of this? Like their whole business is politics. The, 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 the entry level thing you have to do is submit your candidate list. What a disaster is the Thule House and what must be going on there? For these people to not even have been able to get that right. It's appalling. We were talking earlier, Gareth, about what people who work at the Tuli House do. Isn't it? Know. That's what Kalima Mutlante tells us they couldn't get their lists in because those people who work at Lutuli House were on strike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Haven't been paid. Disaster. Disaster. So so to Pumi's question, what do you guys think of this and how do you feel about the the IEC? basically giving the ANC another chance, which wouldn't have happened for your parties, I'm sure. Can I go first? I, I am, you know, I was, when, when the Constitutional Court was, uh, order was announced, I, um, I spent the whole weekend debating on Twitter around what this meant, because I interpreted it as, as reopening the whole process. Um, and there is some merit in reopening the process, because um, there was no final voter registration weekend, which was supposed to be on the 31st of July and the 1st of August. That was cancelled by the IEC, I think mostly because they thought they were going to get the postponement, but they used mm -hmm. COVID as the reason. Um, but um, there were there were many voters, new voters, um, who were not able to register. Um, and so it, it, that part was unfair that there was there was a sudden promulgation of the election without a, f a final opportunity for voters to register as new voters or to correct their registration. Because in local government, you have to be you have to vote where you live. I mean, you can't it's, you know you, you have to live in a ward in a, in a municipality in the right municipality. So for yes. for for that reason, I agree that the voter registration period had to be reopened. And if the voter period reopens and new voters are entitled to be registered, then the Constitution gives them the right to stand as candidates. Section 19 says that you have the right to be a candidate. And Section 158 of the Constitution says the same thing, if you, that every voter has the right to stand to, to be a councillor. So as soon as you open the voter registration period, it follows, I think, constitutionally correctly, that, that the candidate process had to reopen. So, I mean, I, I'm not 
I mean, I'm not. I mean, it is the the, the, the ANC couldn't get this, their shit together. Um, <laughs> we we are a small party in terms of numbers of staff, and we managed mm -hmm. to submit all our candidates and all our lists. But I must tell you, I would rather go into a a an election contest um, and to beat the ANC on the ballot paper than to have them excluded because they they were negligent or they staff yeah. were on strike or or they they captured incorrectly. So I'd rather that they be on the ballot paper and we beat them because the voters reject them than because they were not there. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Do you have something to say about this, Neil? Gareth, Gareth, I think it works both sides. I think at the end of the day, we could not be surprised that the AC was going to get anything uh, except what they wanted. I think we are naive. Um, I think uh, the African National Congress is incompetent. I think they can't even pay their staff because people don't want to give them money anymore. So, you know, with the new law that you've got to declare what you give parties in public, I think that right. no one wants to give them money. So they've got a cash flow problem. You want to know what's going on in Lutuli? <laughs> Nothing. So at the end of the day, we are sitting currently and we as the UIM are also going to benefit because we have now noticed that the more all this rubbish is coming out, the people are actually, Gareth, Pumi, seeing the UIM as an alternative. So when you speak to people and you say, why did you vote for the DA? They said, well, that was the only alternative. More and more people are coming ahead and saying, we'll step up. We might be speaking the same language, but it comes about leadership, Gareth. Leadership mm -hmm. is the difference between what we've got and what we had, and that's it. We all have a different style of leadership. My leadership is about less talk and more implementation. So I must again vehemently with my stunning sister, Pumi, disagree. You can speak about Margaret Thatcher's quotes every bloody day, but at the end of the day, if you're not going to put juju tanks in water, you're not going to collect electricity, you're not going to stop people from dying, and you're not going to give people the basics, then what right. have we fought for 27 years for? How? So, I how? think the, the more important yeah. thing for me is how. How do will it. you do that? Get it done. How get up, you get do off that? your ass and go do it. Go do it. I haven't, so what I haven't heard from you, yeah. what I haven't heard yes. from you today, is I haven't heard, uh, so I've heard the, we want to fight crime. I want to know yes. how. We had a candidate here last week saying to us that you can call out the people, you can put the reports together without the NPA on your side, without the Department of Justice, without this, without that, coming from national and that support, you can't do anything. So how will you do all of the things that you say you want to do? By get, Pumi, not by speaking about it. I'm doing it. Osprey, I have a unit that was advertised and that was given a show. I was on carte blanche. Derry came with us. What did we do? We took policing back to the street, Pumi. If the community starts rising up against crime, then at the end of the day, we can battle crime. So what did Neil De Beer do? I started something called CRU, the Crime Reaction Unit. The CRU are taking people in communities, neighborhood watchers, who normally walk around with a torch and a burp. We are now training them in actually self-defense skills, the law, Brett. So what you've got now is the police are not the answer to me, being an ex-person in uniform. Metro police and law enforcement aren't the answer to crime. Community-based policing is where it should start. So it's easy. Go there motivate the people that they need to firstly patrol their own street, man. your own street, your own block, your own town, your own city. So we are not talking as the UIM about fighting crime. We're leaving it. Poverty intervention is not about giving a food parcel. It is about stimulating in communities the growth of their own veggie patch. We are doing it. So we might be small, but I remember five, fish, uh, five breads and two fishes. So that's our attitude. Stop talking. And I know, Pumi, we have an elephant to eat, but we may eat this elephant piece by piece. And it's about leadership. Okay, so guys, I, I'm I'm getting a little frustrated, not by what either of you are saying here, because I understand that we've got major problems in Cape Town. And I, here's, here's a, a very simple question. And I think this is kind of 
out of left field, but it, it strikes me as something that a lot of people are dealing with at the moment. Gareth here says, do either of you support, now I just want a straight yes or no answer, the position of mandatory vaccinations as has been pushed by the current Premier, Alan Windy? How do you feel no. about that? Do either of you, no. you, do, you, do not, you do not support mandatory vaccination? No. Okay, no. And you, how do you feel about that, Brett? Um... I support I support the right of, I don't know I support the right of people to choose, um, but I think that when people make a choice, there are also some consequences, um, and like there are consequences for children for people who choose not to vaccinate their children currently you know, um, against childhood diseases. So um, you know you're not going to be able to travel easily. I think I support the the the, the restrictions that come with not um, with not being vaccinated. Do you do you guys think we we still have as a result of the the legacy of of this country's history? Do you think we still have more race issues in Cape Town than we do in any other part of the country? Yeah, I, Brett, I think you we got, do. I you think do. do. You think? Okay. I think that we I think um, we have um, a government. I think I, I think the people of Cape Town um, are generous of spirit would like others to succeed, um, would like our city to do better, would, are, are, are deeply uncomfortable with joblessness and homelessness um, and people living in shacks instead of homes. So I think that the people of Cape Town are really connected to each other and, um, and bridge those racial divides. But I think we have a government in, city, in the city of Cape Town that drives those racial divides because they benefit politically from them. So I think that we we have a racial problem, but it's not necessarily amongst the majority of the people of Cape Town. It's currently in in a, in, the, in our administration, which is really I think divorced from the spirit of the city of Cape Town and the soul of the city of Cape Town, which is so much better, so much kinder, so much more connected than our government is. Okay, what do you what do you think of the race problems in Cape Town? Do you think they are worse than anywhere else in the country, or do you think that they they're better, Neil? G Gareth, I, I don't know if Brett understands the TRC where I was. Mm -hmm. I, I was there because I had to testify. Right. We, we we failed we failed there. We got to the truth. We never reconciled. We got to T. So what happens to us? is 27 years we've been living in this rainbow nation bubble. I am the only politician, and I'll tell Pumi that now, I'm the only politician that has traveled this country through it three times now in the back of a combi. And I'm on my way now again, 12 days. Cape Town cannot be seen as an isolation of the absolute pandemic, which is called racism in this country that is still alive. So what we've seen, is that in my opinion, and I come from fighting it to now, sorry to tell you, on the street, we are now more racially divided than we were pre-94. And it's because people like Fricky Malema, those people that are politicians, so Julius Fricky Malema and the rest of these guys, they are the people that thrive on racial divide. Whereas you speak to the ordinary person like I do in Kabecha, in Buffalo City and today, we just want to get on with it. We want to mm -hmm. go on with life and we want to be South African first. So actually, our biggest enemies are the people that you vote in to serve us. Cape Town, sorry, racial divide is there. And we still live in pockets of race. We live in pockets of class. And that's what people like Brett and myself have to okay. concur. We need one city, Gareth, not a separated city. Right, so, but it's, so not guys, just, it's not just I, there. I ask that question not because it, I think it's the biggest issue, but it's just, it's a, a thing the media keep harping on about. And I do think Absolutely. it's worth addressing. And I, I, I'm just well, pleased right. to have both answers. I mean, listen, it's not going to go away, but it seems like that's the only sexy issue for them. And there are lots of things going on in Cape Town. So here's your chance to brag. And you've, we've got another four or five minutes left of the show. So, uh, Brett, why would you make the best candidate? Tell us uh, basically your, your proudest achievement so far, the one that you would elevator like to be. Pitch. Yeah, your elevator pitch. Yeah, and you have, guys, two minutes each, ne? We're, yeah. We're yeah. Not... She's going to keep time. She did this with Herman Mashaba the other day. Let me say, I mean, 
let me start by saying, um, you know, I, I entered politics in, two, in 2008, 2009, um, after being a student politician, you know, like new SAS kind of activating for, for the end of apartheid. And then the, Madiba was released from prison and we had the Rainbow Nation. Um, and I got on with my life as a lawyer. And then I read the book by Andrew Feinstein about the arms deal. And I was so shocked by what I read that I said to my family, either I have to leave or I have to get involved. So I'm involved um, and, and it's a huge sense of privilege to be involved. This city of Cape Town um, is an amazing city. It has all the ingredients for it to deal with the past and to build a modern city for the future where people can actually work and have dignified lives for themselves. We have those ingredients, but we don't have the political will right now to, to harness those ingredients and make the city better. So with me, as, as mayor of Cape Town, you're getting not a professional politician, but a professional, and you don't have to be a professional to, to lead, um, but I have other experience other than being in politics. Um, I'm deeply committed to, um, to eradicating this apartheid spatial divide that exists prominently in Cape Town, and that was the reason why I left the DA, um, and to building a city where, where those that are neglected and left behind start to see themselves as part of the city. So we need to fix things like roads, yes, infrastructure, for me, and we need to fix parks, and we need to Time. fix amenities. But I, I want to just, I'm going to wrap up and quickly say, in fixing all of those things, we also create jobs, because infrastructure build, repair, and maintenance directly right. creates jobs. Okay, your turn for the elevator pitch, Neil. I don't know how you got Roman Mashaba to do it in two minutes. Um, he didn't. So, uh, we, so far, so, so far, so, the, the track record, yeah, yeah. you may be the first one to do it. Two minutes. Go let's, for it. let's see. Stop crime. Stop corruption. Bring capital back to the people. Defend the constitution with everything that we've got. And bring back a little bit of faith. Bring up a little. Bring hope. So plain and simply, the UIM is not going to do this party politics thing. I am not going to stand across the aisle and say what the good party did wrong, what the ANC did wrong. I'm going to tell you what the UIM wants to do right. So we are not going to play that game. We are going to implement what we say, and we are not going to do promises that we are going to break. So simply, we might start from ground. We might not be big. But at the end of the day, I represent now quite a lot of people. I'm not an ex better ANC people. I'm actually just a citizen that loves my country, passionately love them. And it's time that we, the people, rise and we take over. Because let me quickly tell you, and I'm landing this plane now, Pumi. Yeah, what we've got right now, let Five me tell you, anything that we do now is better than what we bloody will have today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so amazing. much for your time this morning. Listen, um, Neil, you, you, Neil, you definitely bring a lot of character to this thing. I hope that, uh, that both of you. I hope both of you get to exercise some of your uh, your skills in the world of politics, because God knows we need people, and those people are us. And I'm just I'm I'm looking at, at two people here who both between you have experience and passion for what you do. You know what? Cape Town can only benefit from people who really want. Who want to improve things for for the average person there, and I, I, I wish you both luck. Thanks for answering all Gareth, of our may, questions. May, may, I, may I ask one more thing, Gareth? Sure. Yeah. Bread, bread, dude. Can we have coffee? <laughs> with you, with a little bit of with a little best cafe think? with a little bit of milk. That's it. Anytime. That's anytime. Yeah. All right. Look very good, Jen. You. Pums, thank you very much, and we will see you all tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. bright and early. The Burning Platform returns next week for another round, and it's brought to you by Nando's. Awesome stuff. Thank you, everybody.